Good afternoon, Ann. Hello, Joe. <laughs> uh, can you give me your full name, uh, your Sylvan Beach name, your married name, and if you wish, your date of birth, but you don't have to yeah. do that? Um, Ann Stewart Burroughs Wisdom, and I was born in 1937. Okay. Uh, can you tell me how the Burroughs family got here? You named two prominent names in your name. Uh, can you give us a little history of how the family got here, your family got here? Well, the Stewart in my name is after my mother, but the Stewarts, S-T-E-W-A-R-T, -E um, whose uh, Aunt Louise, which is Mrs. Louise Bur Burroughs Stewart, and her husband, who is Sidney Stewart, um, Sidney Stewart's mother owned the cottage at the end of the association. It was not included in the association, but it was, it was at the end of the association, the large, we call it the villa. <laughs> um, Grandma Stewart had that cottage, and um, Uncle Jim, I believe his name was, owned the children's cottage. Which, which is now the Peterson Cottage, and it was, I don't know who, there were some owners in between there. Um, so it was because of Aunt Louise who invited her brother up, and we would come, we started coming the year I was born, and we stayed in their garage, which was a very nice garage, for about five or six years until we bought our own cottage, which was right next to Uncle Jim, which was the children, Peterson Cottage, which was I think we bought the Proctor Cottage, okay. and that was owned jointly by my father and his uncle, George Hubbard Burroughs. And that started me, you know, living here. I think I've missed one season, and that was the season that my daughter Jenna was born. And other than that, I have been here every year of my entire life. I see. Uh, you mentioned the name Proctor that owned the cottage. Was that any relation to the Proctor Gamble? Or? I have no idea. No idea. It was just a Proctor. So approximately what year did your father, 1937? It was, or? No, no. It was 42 or 43. I believe it was during the war. Um, until then, we stayed at Aunt Louise's. Okay. Okay. Um, can you trace the uh, family uh, back of the other families that were in your family here that are still at Sylvan? Or, uh, there seems there's quite a lot of relation, I think, in your family to other people. No, there isn't. Oh, there isn't? Okay, I thought there no, was. all those Flint piece okay. people, we call them aunt and uncle, but they aren't uh, relations. Okay. We are really only related to the Stuarts. Okay, now, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, because, yeah, you think everybody from Flint is. <laughs> yeah, <it>? yeah. <laughs> Okay. We aren't. Most of the me. rest of them are, but we aren't. <laughs> okay. Um, you mentioned that you, you were born. Do you have any memories of the Second World War here at Sylvan Beach? You were very young, of course, so it was... Uh... Not, well, not at Sylvan Beach so much. We, um, I remember the uh, ice wagon coming, and we had an ice box, and that was fun, a horse-drawn ice wagon, and we always would get our ice... I would guess twice a week. That was fun. And we had to save our bacon fat and take it to the butcher. And that was used for some sort of munitions or something. Yeah. And at that point, my parents smoked. And the cigarette packages were wrapped in tin foil. And it was our responsibility as children to take the tin foil from the candy bars and the cigarettes and make it into balls. And we could sell that and get food coupons. But other other than the fun things, I don't remember the war very much. Oh, wow, that's yeah. fascinating. Uh, who brought the ice to you at that time during the second? I think it was the dairy. dairy. Oh, the dairy brought I think the, the ice. dairy brought the ice and so the milk, but I'm not sure. So it so it could have been the caretaker, but you aren't sure. I have no was. idea. I have no idea. Do you remember by any chance whether the Sellers boathouse was still being used as an ice house then or uh, I don't. Okay. I don't. I, I, something tells me at what, I, that I'm not that old, you know, yeah, because right, I don't, rem I, I don't remember that at all. That mm -mm. Great. Okay. Um, now you uh, lived in Flint at this time, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, your father was a very prominent banker. Yes. Uh huh. He worked for Citizens Commercial and Savings Bank, and he started there as a delivery boy and ended up as chairman of the board. 
and he was very active here, though he was never on the board of Sylvan Beach. He was a commodore at the Yacht Club and very involved in, in racing and in all those things one does. <laughs> well, you know, I can remember just something about your father that I think should be noted. I remember when we used to sell the junior tickets for the uh, raffle every year for White Lake Day, uh, we'd always run to the Burroughs house first because <laughs> your father would always pop down a hundred dollars yep. to buy tickets, and that was back when a hundred dollars was a great deal. More yeah, money. he's a very generous, very person. generous yep. man, yep. very gregarious, and very yep. kind man. Uh, speaking of that, uh, who who did your father hang around with? Uh, there's a lot of people that aren't here now, and perhaps we should. Maybe right. Um, basically, um, who do you hang around with? Uh, Art children and the um, of course he was always hanging hanging around you know Aunt Louise and Uncle Sid I'm trying to think of he loved to play golf so he spent a lot of time at the golf course with with Kelly Sellers and John Woodward was one of his most fun friends Harry Edson was one of their best friends Harry and Ruth Edson they were very very close to them yes. um, I can't, you know, I'm I'm not really tracking. <laughs> no, I can understand. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. I know I can't oh, remember. Mr. Buckingham, oh, definitely, Bucky Buckingham and and um, oh, Dave Martin. A lot of the people from Flint were just very, very close, and we called them all uncle and aunt, and we all were very fond of one another, and you know, they were very much like uncle and aunts. The Rices and the Martins and the Buckinghams and the and the Johnsons and and some people that lived up on Scenic Drive. And Mr. Sibley too, probably Jim. Sibley. Uh, Jim Sibley still is Uncle Jim to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me. yeah. Uh, can you tell? Do you remember very much about driving up from Flint at this period of time when you were young? Was it a two-lane road and a real long drive? It was definitely a two-lane road, and at that point, my father usually had a very fast racing car, like a Corvette or something like that and we would make record time coming over from Flint. And uh, usually his cars were very noisy, and I remember Carolyn Berger saying something. She said she always knew when my father arrived because her car, he, she could hear his car arriving. <laughs> <laughs> so in a cloud of dust, you know, well, fight and fire, the, yeah, fight and fire the whole way. So, yeah, it was a, it was a fun trip. And of course, it was just beautiful because you went through beautiful farmland and yeah, it was all yeah. two lane. Beautiful yeah, two lane, stuff. beautiful farmland. But now, we, how long did that take? Do you remember? Um, it used to take well five or six hours. Wow. And now it takes um, under three. That's incredible. I remember that too as a child coming up on the old. Oh yeah. It was a long time. That's fascinating. Uh, when uh, uh, you were uh, younger, who were your peers in, uh, at Sylvan Beach and, uh, when you were growing up? Who, who were the people? Okay, um, a lot of them aren't here anymore. Uh, of course, Joanne Roosevelt is here and Jean, they were good friends. And Adele Reitz and Margot Reitz and Joanne Lida, who isn't here anymore, Buster Diamond, Dave Martin, um, Tommy Panyard. Um, that was sort of our group. Oh, the Van Enenums, Beeb and um, Dave Van Enenum were my age. Uh, Nan Sellers. Uh, well, that was it. That was pretty much it. Who were uh, your junior Commodore, let's say, doing when you were growing up? Who were some well, of one of the first junior Commodores was Joanne Lida, and she was also the first woman junior Commodore. Good and so her. we were really, I was her vice Commodore, and um, we were really excited about that, <laughs> I bet, I bet. you know. So, uh, you know, basically all of you know, Buster was junior commodore. I I believe Dave Van Enenum. Oh, Jack Holloway was another person that was, and Sam Post was my age. Okay. Um, you know, most of the people that were in my group no longer come. Yeah. Why is that to you? Well, you, we had several die too, of course. Several died, and I don't know. I don't know. Life and it's just you know, <laughs> the several have moved away. A lot of the families are no longer here. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't know why that was. 
just during that period of time that that was going on. Who were your sailing school teachers? Oh, I had Bruce Stewart for sailing school instructor. I also had, um, oh, what's his name? Um, the dentist uh, that lives on Scenic Drive, oh, Bob Christ Christie. Christie. But it was fun to have Bruce because we learned how to sail on e-boats at that point. And Bruce, I don't know if you remember him, but he had a very strong temper. And one of my great joys in life was going out and tipping his e-boat over. <laughs> Unintentionally, of course. Oh, in, no, intentionally. Oh, intentionally. And okay. we were, I mean, we just gave him just a horrible time, but it was really fun. Oh, the poor man. <laughs> yeah, and I can't remember my third instructor, but it could have been Dodden. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, what were your uh, fond, if you had to pick out your fondest memories of Sylvan Beach uh, from childhood to teenage years, what, what would you, what drew you to this place and still does? You know? Oh, the water, the sun, you know, that sort of a thing. The people, the people are marvelous. Um, when you, this is a, a little bit of utopia, I think that's probably the good thing about it and the bad thing about it. Um, not much changes. Um, I, you know, I really, I just, I don't know why we like it. We had a choice at one point not to come here and to go up to Walloon. But we decided to come here, and mainly because of family. Okay. So there was kind of a magic that drew it, that drew you to it. it oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I think with childhood associations, beach parties, and that sort of thing, you sort of, you know, are always reaching for happy memories. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. yeah. Or just being at least at the yeah. same place where the memories were. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's very true. Um, you're, uh, well, let me ask you, you had a brother who was very prominent, and I remember his uh, junior Commodore, John Burroughs, uh, um, he was a, a very great character. Do you have any stories about John? <laughs> that, uh, well, a few, a few stories, I don't even know if I should tell them, but we used to have, uh, party line phones. And we would call my brother, you know, Hot Lips and Udi and that sort of thing, and whenever he called on the phone, I'd run over to Skipper Lothman's, who was on our, who might, was our next door neighbor, and who was on our party line, as well as the Bogarts, and we'd go over there and we'd listen, <laughs> you know, which didn't help his love life at all. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, he was just, you know, a character. He did he all sorts of. He certainly was. He's yeah. one of my fondest yep. memories of yep. Sylvan Beach and the Junior Yacht Club and the Yacht Club. Yep. Yep. Very, very remarkable man. Very funny man. Yep. Very funny man. Enjoyed him immensely. Uh, what were speaking of John? What were some of the notable characters you could remember from uh, up at Sylvan Beach? Famous people, notable characters, uh, just people that struck you and struck yeah. Sylvan Beach. Yeah. Uh, you, you well, I mean, I suppose you have to to deal with the Roosevelt connection and Ruth Edson being married to Elliot Roosevelt. That was sort of intriguing. Did you see <laughs> he, Elliot? No, there? but mother and dad entertained Eleanor Roosevelt one time. Oh, wow. Um, no. Memorable characters, the most memorable character and the most loving and warm character that I ever knew was Buster Diamond. Buster. I loved him. He was, even though he was very wild, he had a wonderful, giving, caring thing about him. Passion, yeah, he I was a wonderful person. Just from my little bit yeah. Of yeah. He was. He was a very yeah, good. and there were people like Loker Chicken Chittenden and oh, oh, Grandpa Naveen. We used to go over, and he would give us money to go down to Murray's Inn, and we would Sunday night. I think we'd go over and get dropped by his house, which is now the Edson House, and he'd give us money, and we'd go down get ice cream cones at Murray's Inn. That was a big treat. Wow. So that was the Edson House at that. That was uh huh. It was Grandpa Naveen, and I'm, I don't remember his name at this point. Okay. Yeah. Now, when did the Guggins uh, uh, take over? Did that, when did Ruth? Well, I don't know, but it was very, it was fairly recently. I guess. I so. mean, because, uh, well, Teddy must be 45 or 40 46, at this. Yeah. Is he 46? So, and Teddy was, you know, three, four, five, right in that age when he started coming up here. So where did Ruth, when Eleanor came, where, where did they live? Uh, see, I don't know. 
I've wondered that myself. I don't know. So that was the Naveen cottage. Not that right was there? Grandpa Naveen's cottage. Yep. Yeah. So the Roosevelt, we don't know. I always thought they stayed in that cottage. It's amazing. But no, I don't think no, so. No, no it, something tells me it was like up on the hill, like the Ailers or in there, okay. but I'm not sure. I'll be done. Now, did the Naveens own that cottage that they presently own too? At that <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, even though Tim was a contemporary of mine, um, and he, I always remember him in the cottage at, you know, in the middle yeah, of the Toothbrush Row. row. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I always remember the Edson cottage as, as Grandpa Naveen's cottage. Okay. Uh, did, when your parents met Eleanor, did they have any comments? Do you remember any stories? Or, uh, no, not that I... <laughs> but uh, the silver was polished. <laughs> silver, yeah. silver, yes. <laughs> Do you remember, um, let's see, do you, uh, notable characters, do you have any memories of the Sidonis, Joe Sidoni? No, I don't. I really don't. Uh, and I don't have, I don't have rem memories of when um, Betty Bloomer owned this cottage, or when her mother did, um, because this cottage was, you know, pretty far for me to come. And so I, you know, when Jerry Ford was here, I didn't know it or any of that. So you weren't aware of that? No, time. no, not until Monty Terryberry told me about it. <laughs> now, um, wasn't that, was a Godwin involved? Mrs. Godwin owned, was the woman that we bought the cottage from. from, and I believe she was the third Mrs. Godwin, and the second Mrs. Godwin was Betty Bloomer's mother. Okay, Betty so Ford. So Betty Ford, Ford yeah. The president's wife. Yeah. Who knows someday when they'll look at these things, you know, 20 years from now. You're right. Betty Bloomer. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so other notable characters, just in your memory of people at Sylvan Beach, who were some of the favorite people of yours of the adults, let's say, when you were growing up? Or well, I think probably my fair, favorite people were Greta Lothman, Aunt Louise, and Harriet, Harriet Pearson. Um, we spent a lot of time with them, and we we were like family, and and that sort of a thing. Okay. Okay. Um, speaking of characters, not characters, but your uh, husband Tom is a very prominent <laughs> businessman in Rose, and does done very very well. Would you tell us a bit about Tom and how you met Tom, and what Tom presently is doing, and his position with the bank, and uh, just a little bit about your husband? I think he's a Okay, I met Tom my first weekend in college, and then we were married four years later, three or four years later. And he loves it up here. He's more of a Sylvan Beecher than I am. I have a tendency to hide, and he has a tendency to get out there and be very active. He's been on the board, and he loves to That's sail. Too, I, I don't, I think just treasurer. Just treasurer? Yeah. But he loves to sail. He's very outgoing and very athletic. He is always doing something. It's going to be horrible when he retires. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's very involved with Old Kent Bank and Grand Rapids. And, um, now and he's taken Old Kent very far, I understand. Andrew. Well, I, he and a group of other people. Well, yeah. Tom is yeah. He's very prominent in it. Very important. He certainly is a character, and I can remember this first time up here. As a matter of fact, he crewed for me on my e-boat. Oh yeah. And I had a little <laughs> bit of uh, dysentery at the time, uh, but he was certainly a good, good sport, and a real, and has always been a good sport, yep. and a nice person, and a good person. Um, can you give me uh, who were some of the best sailors when you were growing up? Hmm, the best sailors. Well, oh, you had the e-boat, the whole group with the e-boats, with the Youngquists and um, Mary Lynn Andreessen, Joanne Lida had an e-boat, um, I think Buster had an e-boat as long <laughs> and everything else. <laughs> and uh, uh, of course, the, we looked to the e-boat sailors because they were, oh, oh uh, Tom McMurray. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they they were the big guys. Yeah. And then we had um, a, a strong wife flyer fleet. And of course, the sellers were always building better, bigger, illegal boats. 
were quite a good sailor. I can remember that. Yeah. Won a great deal. Yeah. I sa sailed my socks off, so to speak, and and. Uh, you and your brother both were excellent yep, sailors. Yeah. Uh, do you have any idea how many trophies you won through the years? Well, I gave them away when I <laughs> when I left Grosseal. I figured somebody else could enjoy them, and I must have had twenty trophies. I would say so. Yeah. Well, who'd you give them to? Uh, well, the Goodwill. <laughs> Whoever would take them. <laughs> well, that's really neat. That's yeah. That's neat. About 20, yeah, you were always, I remember very well that you were always winning, and John was always, your brother John yep. was always a winner, the sellers too, but they yep. would be the, in the Y Flyer fleet, it was you and the sellers, I think. Um, who else were uh, any remarkable sailors in the Sea Fleet or any other ones? You've mentioned the E and Y. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was Dick Marvel. I don't. Um, what did you start to sail on? What did you learn? To... Uh, I started on a Y flyer, and 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 then you know I just gave up sailing about ten years ago. Well, maybe it was yeah, it was about ten years ago now. So uh, I enjoyed giving up. <laughs> It's yeah. <laughs> been long enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you certainly have made your mark. So, you know, um, was, uh, do you remember how many trophies John probably won? Uh, I have no idea. idea. No idea. And I just remember him being a uh, very a winning a lot. And just a short story about John, because it was always one of the funniest ones that I can remember. Just always hit me was one day when I was young, his wife Flyer broke loose from the dock at the Opa with the sails up. <laughs> and it was sailing down the lake toward the tannery, and I came running into the anchor room and told told John that his boat was off the dock and sailing by itself, and he ran outside with me, and I said, John, do you want me to get my tiny butt putt and go get your boat? And he paused, and he looked, and he said, no, 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 don't go get it. I've never seen the boat sail that good. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a story I've told wonderful. many times about yeah. John Burroughs' wit. Yeah. You know? yep. And I remember when I was young, your brother had me digging beneath the Wabaningo Club. He told me that was where the chief was buried. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for many summers, <laughs> <laughs> endured spiders. You're right. <laughs> oh, God. What was the center of your activities when you were growing up here? When it was sailing. Sailing? Yep. The Yacht Club and Sailing. Yeah, the, uh, the Yacht Club and Sailing. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you were growing up, did you, uh, for instance, in your age group, uh, did you were you allowed to go out at nights as much as kids are? Or uh, oh yeah, we went out every night. In fact, we were so awful that the mothers even had a meeting to set curfews and things like that. But we would, we'd usually go to the beach like the kids do now. But we sang. <laughs> they don't sing now. Um, yeah, we we partied every night. Yeah. Seems like it. Uh, was the, was the, did you drink at that age? Uh, we started drinking pretty early, really? about 15, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I would think so. Which is always better. Beer, yeah. yeah, I don't think we drank anything but beer, but, but we were drinking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, were there, of course, at that time there was no drugs or anything, uh, No, anything like that no, around. we thought we were really bad to smoke cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, God. Um. Do you remember, by any chance, uh, do you have any memory of the worst storm you ever experienced here? Well, probably when I was at Mom and Dad's house. We lived there for a few years uh, before we bought this. And lightning struck, well, it's now the Schaefer's home. Before that, it was somebody from Grand Rapids, and I don't remember his name. But anyway, lightning struck that tree, and it absolutely you know, shattered, and we all were awakened. Um, what's his name? He wrote that Sylvan Beach book. Oh, Forbes. Dave yeah, Forbes. Dave Forbes. Forbes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, uh, do you remember what year that was? No. <laughs> Probably in the 60s. Okay. Yeah. So there was no real storm, per uh -uh. se, that would come to mind. Anyway. No, just those storms that knocked over all the sailboats and that sort of a thing, you yeah, know, yeah. That okay. when we were out there. Did you keep your boats here at Sylvan, or did you keep We them kept there? them always at Sylvan, Sylvan down uh, at the boathouse. Okay. Yeah, the Stuart Burroughs boathouse. Okay. Was there a buoy there? Uh, we had them on buoys, yeah. 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 It was always fun the next morning. You're right. Oh, we spent so many nights out, you know, rescuing boats. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. I remember getting up in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, uh, what was the number of your Wi-Fi? Uh, the one I did really well was 400. 
Y400. Yeah, Y400. And then I, I got a new one, and I don't remember what the number of that was. Okay, what number did they get up to? Do you remember how many? I have no idea. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, when the uh, Korean War came along, do you have any memories of that, of the Korean War? Were there people drafted from Sylvan Beach? Was well, I remember Cam Johnson. He, he was the only one I remember that I knew went to war. Um, and he was, I think he was a captain. He went to war and he came back and he lectured down at the WAB Club about the war and, and the absurdity of a lot of the things that were going on. But it was, you know, he was a very bright, dapper young man at that point. And, you know, it was very interesting and we were all very interested. Um, Tom and I were that much younger that the Korean, we were between wars, wars yeah. you know, between Korea and Vietnam. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what were some of his comments? Do you remember any of the absurdities? Or what was the feeling about the Korean War? Was the people against it? Were they for it? I think they were, I think at that point people were still fa fairly patriotic and they really, they, they supported the effort. Um, he sort of talked about, you know, the people making maps and sending them to them two weeks after they had been in that place, and you know that sort of a thing. The usual snap yeah, the usual usual the army people. stuff. Yeah. 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 So people, well, that was there's nothing wrong with patriotism. That's that's good that there was still support for. I think so. Did you view that then the, the as part of the containment policy and a. That the, that the communists were moving and this was a threat. Not, well, I don't know if I viewed it. I was busy having fun at that period of my <laughs> life. <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> and I just, you know, I didn't know many people that had gone to war and didn't really get involved in war efforts until the 60s and, and that, and then basically, you know, you were, supported the absurdness of the Vietnam the War. war. afraid we're getting into the same thing with Hussein. But Better not. Yeah, we got to watch it. <laughs> uh, uh, do you, uh, who did your jinxes? And can you tell me some of the jinxes you were in when you were young, your memorable, most memorable scenes or memorable <laughs> songs? Or, yeah, uh, I we, we did a lot. We had a, a good group of girls. I remember Joanne McFadden Roosevelt could never get the words right. So we, so we had a, you know, sometimes she was, you know, dressed differently or that sort of a thing, but we had lots of fun. Um, there was one jinx that was sort of fun that they had a running gag and that, and they, people would come through with a plant for Mrs. Hodson. And that was, that was sort of memorable and fun. And to this day, we sort of laugh when we're carrying a huge pot and say plant for Mrs. Hodson. Um, no, Timmy Naveen did a good Good jinx. Um, I don't know. We all took our turns and directed a jinx, and and who knows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, they're, they're all the best jinxes ever. Yes, was. they're all the best jinxes. <laughs> Do you can't remember when? Uh, because when I was uh, growing up, when we did jinxes, we had the plan for Mrs. Hodgson also. Yeah, used it was that. probably you that did it. Oh no, I think it started way before. Oh, did it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I remember I thought it was yeah. great. Um, do you, do you have any idea, well I guess you don't have any idea when that started then? Uh, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh -uh. Uh, Tim Naveen is always, just. you still hear about Tim's jinxes. Do you have any memories of Tim's jinxes? Uh, anything special? Well, they, they were very clever. I think he was um, one of the brightest people up here, mentally. Yeah. And I think he probably still is. Um, and he had experiences that made him, you know, quite clever and, and fresh and new and uh, interesting and innovative. And for some reason, he took to the janks, you know. Yeah, I still yeah. Yeah, hear and remember, you know, hear the Tim's janks and I enjoy talking to him. Uh, Doug Schmidt was another one now, wasn't he? Yes, I, he, um, I co-directed with Doug Schmidt. And uh, it, Doug used, to, well, he lived two or three houses from me. So I grew up with Doug. He was a little bit younger than I was.
you know, probably three or four years. But he had a, a great gift, and of course, you know, he, he took his gift a little further than the rest of us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Went on to Broadway yeah. and San yep. Francisco Met. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you remember any of the Jinx, the titles you did, the themes you did? Uh-uh. No remember. Uh, mm -mm. One number that always comes to my mind, and perhaps I can refresh you, was the uh, Steam Heat number. Yep. Now, was yep. that one of your and Doug's I No, I think that was, um, I, I think uh, actually Dodd and, and that group did that number. Um, Lucy Children, Dodd and Barb Marantet, that group. Did the Steam Heat? Did the Steam Heat, I think. I'll be there because yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. I thought it was more Joey Terry Berry. Oh, it could be. Could be. Yeah. It wasn't my age, I don't think. Okay. Yeah, it was <laughs> it's either before or after. I think it was yeah. after. You know? Yeah, those holes were in the stage for so long. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever use the trap door for your jinxes? It was uh, in the old line. Oh, I think we did. Yeah, I think Doug and I did. Mm -hmm. Good. I don't remember specifically why. Specifically. Well, yeah. well, you know, I think one of the fondest memories that just hit me of Jinx's when, when your brother again, John Burroughs, did the King and I number from the King and I. It was just a riot. <laughs> John was out there with a turban on. Yeah. Uh, it was funny. It was. Did John ever do any Jinx's? I don't know. He was so much younger than I was that I, that I missed a lot of his life. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you go to college? Just Went to the University of Colorado. Okay. Why'd you go there? Because I wanted to go west and I'd been east to high school and, and that to me was west and of course my husband was from San Francisco and he wanted to go east to college so he went to the University of Colorado. <laughs> so life is just all perspective. Yeah, it really is. It <laughs> yeah. Really is. Yeah. Um, Where'd you go to high school then at Peace? What? I went to Mount Vernon Seminary in Washington, D.C. It was a private girls' school. Um, you guys, you have two daughters, two wonderful daughters, mm -hmm. uh, and a son. Would you give us their names? And, uh, uh, Jenna, who lives in Massachusetts, and uh, Mary Stewart, who is now in Lansing, and Matthew, who is living with us now. And yeah. how many grandchildren do you have? I have one grandchild, James Thomas, named after Daddy, and uh, Mr. Beckett, and he lives with Jenna and her husband John out in Massachusetts. Okay. What uh, your uh, mother? What was she was involved in uh, various things? Wasn't she here? She played a lot of tennis, tennis, a great deal of tennis, and she. I don't know if she was ever involved in the Jinx here, but she did theater as a young woman. Yes, yeah, she was also. Very, yeah. Very special. Uh, what do you think nowadays, are there more, in the adult areas, uh, are there more corporate, are there more social events, are there more cocktail parties, uh, uh, how do you feel things have evolved socially or have they, or uh, good changes? I think it's pretty much the same, I think people kind of do the same things and, and uh, I mean I'm you know, you go to sailors lunches and, and uh, beach parties and family parties and mainly, you know, this whole area is, Sylvan is family oriented. Um, I think basically the same things are going on, except people now are having weddings here where they didn't in the olden days. Okay. Yeah. Which brings me to another question. What was the biggest wedding or most prominent wedding that you can remember here? The one that hit you or... One that was a well, see, I don't. I my cousin's wedding was one of the first ones. Mary Stewart, when she married Freddie Webster, um, I was not able to go to that. Um, I don't know. They're all they all have been lovely. That's right. <laughs> yeah. like all jinxes, You're right. The best, you know? <laughs> um. So, do you see any uh, uh, changes in the? in the social atmosphere and all you don't you think it's just kind of gone along the same way it's basically the same as it all always was no well, you're you're basically dealing with the same people that have always, always been, been here so i don't you know think that that well ann uh that's really about all <laughs> i have uh thank you very much and you're very you welcome think, if, if my pleasure anything, <laughs> my pleasure too yeah. if if you think of anything that you missed and you want to add on to it 
and keeping everybody gets uh, their own section or their own tape. So oh, you good, add, Joe. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> oh, you can pay me $50, Ian. <laughs> yeah. I might be able to have a little arrangement. <laughs> yeah, right. Get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> get rid of it. <laughs> But if if you do think of something you want to mention, maybe about your dad or mom and things they did, I think it's very important because okay. those were a very important part. Well, I think one of the fun things that my father did was he would buy cookies and newspapers and he would deliver them to people. So when they woke up, like on Sunday morning, they'd have their Sunday newspapers on their back porch. And usually um, he'd buy these little sugar cookies. You can get them in Muskegon. And he had maybe 15, 20, 30 people that he would just deliver cookies to. He'd drive up and put them on their back porch, sort of like a Santa Claus type thing. So no. that was a fun thing oh, that he that used to do. That's just yeah. like your father. He was yep. just that type of fellow. What did he do? Get up early Sunday morning? Oh, yeah. He'd get up at the crack of dawn, go get the newspapers for everybody. <laughs> you know? wow. yep. a, man does, a man like that doesn't need church. He's doing what he's doing. Yep. So I know he probably went to church too. And everything. No, he never went to church. Well, he, 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 he did what we're supposed to do. He yeah. was supposed to learn yep. to do in church. So always a very kind man to me. And very gregarious and very yep. kind. And again, if you think of anything, please call me. And okay. I'll just and we'll just come back and put it down because I think, you know, your family. That's it. Be good. <laughs> yeah. That'd yep. be good. Thanks a lot, Ann. You're very welcome, Joe. And in 19 and 2020, when you look at this. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Let me get that off of you. You're right. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. That's great. Oh.